Good day. Welcome to Chad's Cards, home of questionable advice and even worse production value. So hope everyone is doing well today. I wanted to get a uh, something out this week, um, mostly just to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Hope everyone is able to make the best of it, all things considered, this year. And uh, today this will just be a, a quick video on uh, some cards that are holding up better than the market. A few buys and our, uh, our new tradition of an annual turkey. So um, we'll kind of fly through and just to talk about you know, what's going on in the in the card market today there's been a lot of rotation um, into what i would call the blue chip cards and these are the vintage names that all the available information is is processed and this is what you see in large companies um, that that people invest in like the apple and microsoft there's, there's not a lot that they're going to be able to do the information is processed their price is their price they can still trend upwards um, but there isn't going to be this you know this shock that really uh, does something to their price one way or another so um, these are players you know so a lot of people like the finches names because these are players that again they're in the hall or they're not and that's that's not going to change for the most part so again their prices can kind of grind higher um, but at the same time you're not going to get that speculative kick I think that rush that a lot of people are looking for you know can I buy a prospect card for you know 25 cents and get a whole bunch of them and then he turns into the next hall of fame or something like that so um let's just get started here with some of the blue chip guys and take a look at the overall price action so the first person we're going to look at today is the 1984 tops traded dwight gooden in a psa 10 and you can see that he's enjoyed a run up with the rest of the uh, the market here you know sitting around 100 bucks until uh the middle part of this year and then he started to break out and you can see that it's just kind of grinded higher so um, hitting the top of the range and coming in. There's not a lot of volume in these things, so there's not a lot of a lot of dots. You had a, a purchase here, and then it drove it right to the top of the range here, um, and uh, and it came back, uh, you know, back into an area where it's probably, you know, fairly priced. So a $200 card. Honestly, the upside isn't there to these cards. Uh, there's a lot more players that I'd be interested in. We'll hit a, a couple of them here. But um, these are names that are not going to hurt you in this market. So Dwight Good, 1984 tops traded. Uh, again, very nice uh, uptrend here. You're not a Hall of Famer, but um, a lot of people sure have fond memories. A lot of people, especially the players, that, people that are coming back into the hobby, have a lot of fond memories of those mid-80 players. So Dwight Gooden is one player that is not going to hurt you. Another one is 1983 tops traded. Daryl Strawberry in a PSA 10. Again, I don't know if I'd do the PSA 10s on these. I perfectly happy with a uh, nice condition Raws or anything like that. I don't want to spend $300 on Daryl Strawberry when I can get a uh, interesting Juan Soto. But again, not a Hall of Fame uh, player, but a lot of uh, fond memories here. So um, sideways action here, but he's right around his all-time highs. So again, this is a card that hasn't hurt you. So there's been a lot of selling that has taken place at this $300 level. It's a nice round number when people that have bought, and bought here saw the price dip. They're saying, well, just if I can just get my money back, I would be really, really happy. And this is what happens. Now, when it breaks above this, then you could see a lot of speculation back, you know, up to that $350, $400 level. So, again, there's money to be made. But, again, are you going to spend 300 bucks on a, on a Daryl Strawberry? You may, well, obviously, some people are, but it's not for me. But this is a card that's holding up better than the uh, the better than the rest of the market overall. So, very gentle uptrend, but it looks like it, that uh, that could continue if it can bust above that. $300 price level. All right, John Smoltz, Hall of Famer. We'll get to our first Hall of Famer here. And this is the 1989 Upper Deck uh, Star Rookie in the PSA 10. And a very clean uptrend here. So you can see when it gets down to this lower boundary and it makes it to the highs, there's your buys and sells if that's what you want to do. So not a terribly liquid market by any stretch here, but there is interest in the card here. It's sitting in the middle of the range here. So you can see it dip down, you know, to that, uh, you know, $30, $35 level, or maybe it goes up to 60 or 7 So I, I, Again, I don't think this is going to turn into a two or three hundred dollar card by by any stretch here. Maybe it just grinds up, but um, consider this the uh, you know if you if you're consider your cards an investment, and that's what I do for my day job. So my cards are a collection. I never I don't sell. I put some thought into them, but I don't sell, so I don't really care. But th I thought this is interesting. Maybe this is interesting for uh, for other people. Um, but yeah, so again, is it going to double or triple? It, probably not. Um, is it going to hurt you in downtrends? Well, apparently not that either. So you'll have a portion that uh, portion of your cards in that blue chip stuff, and I think uh, your overall collection will, will hold them just fine. So that is your your first Hall of Famer, John Smoltz. Get to Miggy Cabrera, soon to be Hall of Famer, two thousand tops traded. You know, this is a base card PSA ten. Again, very defined range here. You know, gently sloping upwards, but again, it's around its highs here, so it's held in better than the rest of the market. Um, 
for the first half of the year, first part of the year up until you know till the season started. You know, this is a hundred dollar card. You can see where it's spiking now. If you compare this to other Hall of Famers, um, you are looking at eight nine hundred dollars or something like that. Um, you know, if you look at like Pujols, or you know, and you have to make apples to apples comparisons here. So, um, you know, this is a card I think with upside once he starts to get um, a lot of chatter. You know, right now it's you know, his play isn't that great. Um, but when he retires, I think you'll see more more demand in this thing. Maybe it breaks out of this. But right now, gently sloping upwards and around its highs. And so the safety of the Hall of Famers is, is apparent in this particular card as well. So moving on, I don't even know who this is here. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. This is Gary Sheffield. <laughs> so um, his, this is his uh, 1980 or 1990? You know, whatever his upper deck rookie is. So we'll, I'll slap a picture up here and you can we'll take a look at it together. Uh, but it, it's a, it's been a sideways card here. Um, again, I think people are just kind of feeling nostalgic about a lot of these cards. So it had this breakout, and for some reason, it's it's kind of spiking back up. So another purchase maybe brings it back up to that sixty dollar level. Again, I don't think this is a uh, a card that rockets up to two three hundred bucks. There's no reason for that. Um, he, he was a darn good player in his prime. There was a case for him to be made in the Hall of Fame, but that time is is past, I believe. And so. Um, you know, for those so those types of players, kind of that fifty dollar range is is what I think they should be. But for some reason, Gary Sheffield, he could bust up a little bit here if the, if nostalgia kicks in. So he's held up better, oh, probably about the same as the as the rest of the market here. So again, you know what you're getting with them. Um, so uh, unless some veterans community slaps him in the Hall of Fame, um, this is this is probably where you're at. But what the heck, it's it's interesting and it's it's held up. So all right. Tops Tiffany Bo Jackson. This is a 1987 Tops The Future Stars in a uh, PSA 9. Um, probably pretty equivalent to what a ROM might be. So this is the Tiffany version. And a lot of the Bo Jackson cards are doing just fine. So I just kind of picked this one. And um, looks like it's kind of a, you know seeing some accumulation here. And you could see a, a push back up to that $85, $90 level. Um, I'm, this was kind of a, a weird a weird purchase up, up at that level. There was a little bit of panic. Like everything else in the middle of the summer here. But it looks like it's uh, it's kind of starting to slope upwards, and you could see some more upside in Bo Jackson. And just the myth, the man, the legend, um, it's all out there. But you know, a lot of uh, a lot of fans of uh, Tech Mobile and all of his commercials back in the day are gonna want to start getting his cards again. They've been doing that, um, and so here's your chance to to get back in on some uh, some higher grade stuff for Bo Jackson. Again, you can buy the Ross for pretty cheap, and that's probably the way to go for for most of these. But you know, to get that really apples to apples comparison. Uh, the PSA 10 uh, kind of gives you that. So um, I don't even know what's up next. Um, all right, so we're getting into guys that um, there's a lot ahead of them here. So this is the 2019 Pete Alonso base. So these are cards that I'm actually acquiring at this level. I didn't get this at all, but they're in an area here where there's been a lot of purchasing. Mm -hmm. And so a Pete Alonso, people, they've already forgotten how good he was his rookie year. Um, last year wasn't that bad, um, is what people are kind of missing here. You know, he got a really lousy first half, but he started to pick it up again in the second half. You know, he was a 240 hitter. Um, his home run to fly ball ratio regressed to a normal area, 25%, you know, down from the 30% he did as a rookie. And his hard hit and his medium hit percentages kind of switched around a little bit. We didn't have a lot of soft contact. It wasn't popping out. Um, his BABIP was extremely low, so he was hitting the ball hard. He was just hitting it to hitting it at people, so I would expect some normalization um, over the next year. And if he can get back, and he should be able to get back up to that 250, 60 area. And again, his 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 power output this year was probably close to a 35 to 40 home run pace, and that's that's a good that's a good player. Probably certainly better than 30 bucks that you would pay for a, for a perfect 10 of his card. Now, now print runs are a lot higher, so you know I'm not saying it should be you know this or anything like that. But again, this is an area where there's a lot of accumulation. This is a player that I think is um, being overlooked at the time. I don't love him long term or anything like that. But you know, for guys that you're paying thirty bucks for, they they haven't done as much as him. So um, I do like Pete Alonso in this area just to kind of catch up on on some of the guys I've done earlier in my uh, so the modern guys I do in my Hall of Fame tracker series, and this is one I did earlier. So we'll check in on them from time to time and see how we're doing here. So um, one that I did say to avoid, I didn't understand this at all. Um, was Jose Abreu? He's a little bit older, probably not on the Hall of Fame track. He could get a little bump um, for Hall for for MVP, but again, not on the Hall of Fame track. Those are fifty dollars players for the most part. I said, don't do it here. Look for forty, fifty bucks. Here you are. If you need a Jose Abreu, this is the time to look at it. Again, probably rather do a raw, but if you're 
you know, you got to have the holder and make all your cards look the same, then this is probably a decent time for that one. And, whoops, whoop, that's not what I wanted to do here. Sorry about that. Hey, uh, you know what? I love Eloy too. Buy his stuff. It's cheap. <laughs> oh, I just went over him a couple days ago. Uh, Tops Chrome, Ozzy Albies Base. Um, I don't get this <laughs> at all, but that's fine. I'm just going to keep buying more. So um, his uh, PSA 10 base card just went for a little bit under 30 bucks. And this is a, a young player that's being overshadowed on his team. Um, but he's got everything going for him right now. He's been a terrific player. He's young. Um, he's producing at a, at a high level. Um, so he's a little bit under the radar. And this is probably one of the guys I'm focusing on the most right now. I just think it's a tremendous value. So, um, you know, get his variations, his parallels, all that kind of stuff. You can get those relatively cheap. So I liked them in here. And, and as the price trends down, I like it even more. So hopefully it finds a little bit of support in this area here. But it, it could continue to grind lower. And you know what? I don't mind that. I'll just, I'll just buy more here. So anyways, in honor of... The Thanksgiving holiday. We'll wrap it up with uh, with a uh, Chad's turkey of the year here. Um, a wise man once said, "It ain't something to be like. It ain't cool being no jive turkey so close to Thanksgiving." So, um, a player that I thought was really interesting in my second base projections was a player who's um, nearing the end of his career but still producing at a high level. He's accumulated sufficient more to be in consideration. Um, he's, he was on a dynastic team and gets a lot of love for being in a big market, and that was Robinson Cano. Now. His card was his rookie card was going for about ninety or hundred bucks, and I thought that was fair because there was enough questions about his PED suspension in in uh, twenty eighteen. You know, missing half a season. I thought there was enough uh, enough confusion around that about you know, it, about his future to be like, well, you know, he's not going to be that hundred fifty two hundred dollar player who's definitely getting in. But you know, I thought it was at least a reasonable you know, risk reward for what could happen. Now he just got suspended for next year with another violation and that completely removes all Hall of Fame potential there. So um Robinson Cano was a player that I liked, I no longer like. Um is a is a investment purpose. If you like him as a player, if you like what he did with the Yankees, great. I have at it. But I think a high grade example should be in that forty or fifty dollar area now. Maybe it's already reflecting that. I haven't looked. Um honestly I would look at uh, a raw card for um you know 10 bucks or something like that. I wouldn't put much into it at this point because I think his chances are now officially off the table. So that's what I have. I hope everyone has a great holiday weekend. Next week we'll be back with our center fielder breakdown and we've got a couple of openings hopefully um, if we get them. Stop stadium, <laughs> Tops Stadium Gum Chrome, Club Chrome, and uh, Tops Black. So we're getting both of those next week and depending on when we get them, we'll, Tommy and I will we'll, we'll have at it. So have a great uh, have a great long weekend and take care.